once upon a time. Two fighters first met in a fight in front of the public, but then contractual fights appeared. There are various reasons to arrange a fake match, but these days this practice has almost disappeared. Top fighters do not want to lose sponsors, a clear record, and championship titles because of a negotiated fight that could derail their entire careers. But when mixed martial arts was in its infancy, when the Yakuza controlled promotions, and to attract viewers it was vital to show the victory of the public favorite. In those years, the practice of fake fights was revived. Today, we will remember the cases of recognized and proven contractual fights, as well as watch a few dubious fights and together remember how it was. Let's start with the first origins of mixed martial arts. Ken Shamrock's fight, and I think there's no point in introducing him because he is a champion and legend of mixed martial arts. But his rival Matt Hume was not so famous and we know him more as a coach of Demetrius Johnson. But here's how Matt stood out so much for his love of idle chatter and conspiracy theories, but more on that later. Now let's take a look at Hume's deal with one of the most dangerous fighters of that era. Ken always started a fight with a pass to the ground and tried to make a painful hold, but here he somehow slowly and easily strikes as an easy sparring. Hume easily throws Ken, something that Masakatsu Funaki and even Don Fry could not do. There are a lot of punches in the standing position, but it is clear that no one really invests in punches, although Ken usually hit, not sparing the opponent. A series of good hits, but Matt Hume literally sends Ken Shamrock flying. When I watched this fight for the first time, I could not even imagine that it was a contract fight. But the last straw was this pro wrestling throw that simply cannot be done if your opponent won't help you. The first time I read this in a book, Total MMA, I did not attach any importance to it, considering it ordinary gossip, until I saw it with my own eyes. Later, Shamrock, in one of his interviews, admitted that he simply played along with Hume. Before the fight, Hume approached Ken and said that he was afraid, and Ken replied, let's put on a show for the public, which we saw. Ken might have kept quiet about this, but old Hume himself began to tell that he allegedly succumbed to Ken, who, in turn, shed the truth about this fight. Matt Hume's entire career has been dubious. Look at Scott Sullivan's fight with a fighter no one knew. This fight looked like easy sparring, but this time Matt won. Look for the fight and watch it in your spare time, and I think you will agree with my opinion. Another fight is the fight of Alexander Emelianenko who at that time was a world-class fighter, and his opponent was Eddie Bankson, who broke down even before the fight. In this fight, Eddie fell just from the wind, depicting a heavy knockout. Alexander himself had no idea about his enemy's intention, and the organizers did not think it made sense to bribe such a fighter. Now let's move on to the immortal classics, to the Nobuhiko Takata fights. Everyone knows the story of how pro wrestling star Nobuhiko Takata challenged Hicks and Gracie as the Japanese public demanded. Hickson refused to merge the duel, although such offers were received, but he quickly defeated Takata. Takata realized that in real fights, he could not show anything. But the future of Japanese promotion depended upon his name, which was founded for the sake of a showdown with Gracie. Therefore, it was imperative to show the fans Takata's victory. For such an event, the fierce monster Kyle Sturgeon came to Japan, who did not have a defeat since he was a debutant. Kyle trained with Kimo Leopoldo, 
so that he knew how to fight and could give a convincing show. Nobuhiko Takata is ready to tear the opponent. But once he knocks Takata down, Takata is shocked. Rumor has it that it was Starjo who taught Mirko Krokop this killer high kick. The exchange of low kicks and a beautiful takedown. Japan's pride rises and puts Kyle on the ground and carries out a painful one. Incredibly, Takata snatches the victory. This show was enough for Takata to get revenge with Hickson, in which he showed improvement, but still lost. After the defeat, a really big name was needed to restore faith in Takata. And so the choice fell on Mark Coleman. Coleman was going through hard times, having lost three fights in a row. Japanese promotion then paid good money, and Mark shipped off to Japan. As Coleman himself said, they offered me a good contract. The condition was to submit to Takata, and Coleman, who needed it to feed his wife and two little daughters, did what was impermissible for an athlete, but necessary for a father and husband. Mark allowed Takata to return to the rack. He did not hit, but designated punches and sometimes deliberately missed. Mark took Takata on a choke, with which he defeated Dan Severin, but the Japanese fighter turned out to be stronger than Severin, and escaped. Mark allowed Takata to hit a few low kicks, and then gave him a painful one on his leg. He even showed a pro wrestling gesture, like, I'm not giving up, which showcased the agreement of this fight. Everyone decides for himself whether to blame Mark for it or not. Mark himself has not yet revealed the secret of the agreement with Takata, and does not speak about it directly. Although everyone has known the truth for a long time, and no one will condemn him cause of bygone days. After such a show, Takata no longer allowed himself to show such frankly arranged fights, but the shadow of agreed fights was present in every fight. For example, Mark Kerr openly let him get up from the ground in order to somehow tighten the fight. And I will never believe that Igor Vokanshin took 13 minutes to finish the powerful Takata. I am sure Igor also pulled rubber so that the Japanese star could entertain the audience. You can remember the fights with Mirko Kroka and Mark Bernardo, where kickboxing legends just walked around and did nothing until the time limit ran out. And it was Crow Cop who beat Vegeta in 40 seconds. That was the price paid to develop the Japanese promotion. The first few tournaments barely paid off, and only a show with Takata managed to save the promotion from bankruptcy. Until Kazushi Sakuraba took over the baton and became the main magnet for Japanese fans. So in a way, we have to thank Takata, because without him, we might not have seen Fedor Emelianenko, Mirko Krokop, and Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira in the largest arena in the world. The great Dan Severin constantly told Ken Shamrock that his pancreas fights were the usual scenario fights in which Dan himself performed at one time. It turns out that Dan himself had unclean hands, fight with a guy named Shannon Rich, is a guy who fights at present. But in that fight, these guys knew something that obviously no one else knew. It all started with a tough fight of views. Everything went fine until this throw when Dan simply let go of his opponent, although we all know what he could have done with it. Rich responds with a show, and again, Severin arranges some kind of demonstration, probably afraid to throw Shannon on the present. Then, Dan began to pretend that these clumsy kicks hurt him. Look at this, he's clearly pretending. Then Shannon drops the legend with a high kick. He was even close to victory. But Dan pulls out the victory in a dramatic manner with a choke. I don't understand the motives of this fight. Dan was the favorite, 
and he won, so there's nothing to bet on. I think that Shannon understood that he would not be able to provide decent resistance, and the guys decided to put on a show for the public. This fight is often referred to as a pattern of fixed fights. I came across another Dan Severin fight, which seemed very suspicious to me, and this fight is nowhere referred to as negotiated. So these are my personal assumptions, and after viewing, you can either agree with me or not. Feel free to write your own assumptions in the comments. It was a high-profile tournament in which Don Fry, Kimo Leopoldo, and Paul Varlance also fought. Severin got the karate representative, Mitsuhiro Matsunaga, as opponent, as he was introduced by the commentators. But Matsunaga was a Japanese pro wrestler. He became a star several years before this fight. Only the audience behind the borders of Japan could believe the legend of the karate fighter. The start of the fight is standard for Dan, but then he starts picking up and throwing Matsunaga around the ring with a brutal expression on his face. In some places, you can see how Dan ensures the Japanese athlete, protecting him from injury. Compare his throws from the real fight to how lightly he threw Matsunaga. Old Dan puts on a great show because with such a break, he could simply beat an opponent if he wanted to. And here's the final. Dan conducts the so-called Fujiwara armbar. This is a classic finish from pro wrestling. Matsunaga also had a kickboxing fight in which he fell without hitting. Then there was an imposter like Rafael Torre, who claimed to have served in the Navy SEALs, but he was quickly exposed. Salvation and excuse for him could only be a well-conducted duel. On occasion in battle, he was opposed by his teammate, Ayoka Tiani. In this fight, there was a real house, light semi-punches, and falls. Ayoka gives the opponent a rise to exchange questionable punches. The apogee of this fight was a completely incorrectly applied knee lever. Ayoka Tiano immediately began to scream with imaginary pain and knock on the floor. Of course, teammate Raphael lost the victory to his teammate. And you don't need to be an expert to see how badly that grab was made. Let's go back to the origins in Japan and before one of the titans of the promotion, and part-time the head of the organization, was Masakatsu Funaki, one of the best pro wrestling actors. Ken Shamrock said that Funaki literally humiliated him in the first joint training session, and Frank Shamrock claimed that Funaki was light years ahead of everyone else in those years. In 1995, Masakatsu fought the young Frank Shamrock for the first time. Frank had a couple of chances, but no one was surprised when the Japanese forced him to knock on the sixth minute of the fight. After half a year, they met again. The rematch turned out to be much more competitive. The younger Shamrock fought like a lion, showing himself perfectly both in the standing position and on the ground. And after a while, Shamrock caught Funaki on Toho. In general, there is little surprise here, but many years later, in his autobiography, Frank Shamrock wrote that he did not believe in the legitimacy of that victory. Frank admitted that he fought with all his might, but did not understand how he managed to catch the Japanese master by mistake. And only after gaining experience and as he approached Funaki's level, Shamrock realized that Masakatsu himself had succumbed to him. Frank believes that the Japanese ace wanted to make a star of him. Moreover, Frank suspects that Minori Suzuki succumbed to him as well. Here, however, we disagree. Minori was a level lower than Funaki and could sometimes lose due to excessive self-confidence. In the fights with Ken Shamrock, this was not the case. As Ken himself said, he and Funaki arranged only real fights. The older Shamrock was physically stronger he was simply physically dominated by the fighter from Japan. Shamrock took the guard and made a choke through the hand, so he won two fights against Funaki. But in one fight, Masakatsu snatched the victory. As soon as Ken was on his back, Masukatsu saw a weak spot and performed a rear naked choke. Frank Shamrock 
with his Hollywood looks and flamboyant style was useful for boosting the promotion, and therefore Funaki decided to succumb to him. At least Frank himself thinks so. This was a video about contractual fights. Of course, this is not all, and in the future, I will make another video about contractual fights. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the like button, as well as leave your comments and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you as soon as possible.